Next up, I had what I was really hoping would be a book that I enjoyed that I just did not. Oh, the dog has entered the chat. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. This is Rosie Rose Reads. I am Rosie and I am reading. Y'all, it has been a minute. I am so sorry. I have been so busy and I feel like it's been forever since I sat down to film a video. I am filming this one. We are a couple days into October so I'm a little bit late with my September wrap up. Um, but it's here. That's what I have for you today is my September monthly reading wrap up. And then hopefully I will film a October TBR video. Um, again, like we are getting into October, so I've got to get on it. I was going to combine it, but I know the YouTube algorithm likes when you post a lot of videos and I'm not posting that many videos because I have a full-time job and this is like just a hobby. So anyway, hopefully I will at least get up this video and an October TBR video soon, but let's jump into it. Let's stop the chit chat and get to the books because I know that's what everyone's here for. And by everyone, I mean the few of you who tune into my videos. You all are the Oh geez, thank you so much. I appreciate it. But if you're new here, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on these hypothetical future videos. Um, yeah, let's jump into it. So first let's chat about September. Last September, I got married last October. So last September I was like in wedding planning rush and I read like two books. It was the worst reading month I had had in a very long time this September, I'm not getting married. So I thought there's no reason that September should be any less of a reading month than the other months that I've been having. And mm -hmm. like, just for some context, if you're new here, I've typically been averaging about like 12 to 14 books a month on average. That's kind of where I've been at about. September was not it. I read eight books in September, which like is is still good like let's be real that's still a lot and I got pretty far like at least 20% into one book and DNF'd it but I just kind of hit a little bit of a slump it I wasn't really reading anything that was like super engaging towards the end of the month and I just kind of lost my steam my husband and I did go on vacation we went to Maine I was not reading on that trip because we were out and about exploring, doing things, hiking, biking, and I was so exhausted when we got back to the hotel that I like did not read at all. So I definitely wasn't reading then. And then when we got back, I kind of just wanted to watch TV. Um, we watched all of The Bear, which is fantastic. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend. Um, I started rewatching Scandal. As always, we're watching our Dropout shows. We are huge fans of Dropout. So yeah, I kind of just lost my steam on reading. Luckily, it's back. I am currently reading some books I'm enjoying, but we're not going to talk about that in this video. Yeah, so it was kind of like an iffy month. Um, but I should also mention I am counting a fan fiction in that eight books, which some of you might not count in your reading goals, some of you may count in your reading goals, but because it was long, I am counting it. So seven traditionally published books, one fan fiction book. Um, let's chat about them. So I did start September off on a very high point, and that was with Alison Saff's A Fragile Enchantment, and this was an arc that I got through NetGalley book I believe is set to publish sometime in January so definitely like pre-order it. I did pre-order a physical copy of the book because I really enjoyed the arc but at least like be on the lookout for it come January because I really enjoyed it. If you are familiar Alison Saft wrote A Far Wilder Magic which I really enjoyed and if A Far Wilder Magic is kind of the perfect fall atmospheric book a Fragile Enchantment is the perfect spring atmospheric book. It really feels like 
kind of like tender new flower blossoms, a rainstorm, dewy mornings, and warm sunshine. Like it just kind of encapsulates spring and I feel like Alison Saft really knows how to write a beautiful story that pulls the reader in and makes them feel what the characters are feeling. So this book first and foremost is a romance but there is a magical element and it's an interesting well thought out unique magical element that does influence the plot. With that said the fantasy is second to the romance but the romance was wonderful and was very I don't like everybody I'm grumpy to everybody except for you and it is a YA but like there was some steamy tension filled scenes for a YA book so it's like I would say definitely upper YA um it's not graphic but like there was some tension going on so um Anyway, A Fragile Enchantment, it follows Neve O'Conquabar, who is a Macklish girl, which is kind of Irish coded. And she's a tailor with a divine gift. She can enchant feelings, memories, emotions into the clothes that she creates, um, even though it takes a toll on her body. There's a little bit of kind of chronic illness representation that's going on in this book. And she is commissioned to create the clothes for the royal wedding of Prince Kit Carmine and the Infanta Rosa. And Kit is the second son, so the spare, so to say. Um, and she kind of finds herself thrust into royal society with a grumpy prince, a prince regent who's hiding something, and a prejudiced society who is very into gossip and very anti rising tension between Avaland, which is again like Britain coded and Macklish, which is Irish coded. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed this book. I thought that the characters were complex and loving and like well thought out. Um, none of the support characters felt like they were just thrown in. Um, I really enjoyed it. I did give it about four and a half stars. It is a fantasy world, but it so closely mirrors the real historic events and then has some modern day phrases thrown in and that kind of throws me off. And I totally get why she writes these things as more coded rather than just blatantly she was Irish. Um, but it does kind of in some instances throw me off when I'm like, she's so clearly Irish and this is so clearly like, Regency era England, but we're not using that terminology. Um, so it comes to about a 4.5 star and A Far Wilder Magic was also about a 4.5 star for that same reason. But overall, like I really love these books. I really love this writing and I highly recommend it, especially if you read um, Rebecca Ross's Divine Rivals and loved it. I know it's been everywhere. Then you will love this book. Please trust me. Please pre-order it. Please have it on your radar. Next up, I listened to the audio of Pet by Akweke Ameze, and despite the fun, colorful color that looks a little like more middle grade, this is also definitely a more mature YA book. Mm -hmm. It is a like f f haunting kind of fantasy book that um, is real and is weighty but has this fantasy element that makes it intriguing and makes it like readable when you're reading about kind of a scary topic. This book also has really incredible representation. Jam is a selective, sleep selective speaking trans girl who has her best friend Redemption and when she meets Pet, who is a creature that is scary and emerges from one of her mother's paintings when a drop of Jam's blood gets on the painting. And then this, and then Pet tells Jam that Pet's there to hunt a monster and the monster is in Redemption's house. It kind of mixes this element of what Jam thinks is a fantasy monster and what ends up being an actual real life monster in Redemption's house committing 
heinous crimes that um, Redemption's family is not all fully aware of. And it really deals with family and secrets and when like society is in denial, the whole idea is that monsters have been eradicated from this world that Jam and Redemption live in. So learning that there's a monster in this world is very scary for them. Um, yeah, this book is just so unique. I truly have not read anything like it. The audio version was very good. I would recommend it. It was a quick read on audio. I think it was about four hours, five hours maybe. It was like I was able to read it in one day on audio and I would recommend it for sure. Okay, now it's time to talk about fan fiction. I can't believe I'm putting this out on the internet. Anyway, I read Secrets and Masks by Emerald underscore Slytherin, which is a Germany fan fiction. It's like insanely long. I think Goodreads is telling me it's 1800 pages long, the ebook version. So it's very long. It is like loosely based off of Manacle. And I think the author is like pretty um, upfront that she was inspired, that they were inspired by Manacle to write this story. Um, yeah, I'm not going to say much more because if you're going to read it, you should go into it like kind of blind. And if you're not into fan fiction, I'm not going to waste your time by talking about it. So I did read it. It was long. It took me a while, but it was worth reading. I gave it like four and a half stars, maybe. So yeah. Okay, is now the time to talk about the DNF book? Because I feel like now's the time to talk about the DNF book. So I unfortunately DNF'd The Starless Sea by Aaron Morgenstern. I had heard going into this book that this book was all vibes, no plot. It was all kind of flowery, flowery language about loving books, about loving stories, but there wasn't a lot going on. It was hard to understand. It was confusing. And I was like, I love stories and I love books and I you know, love some nice prose, uh, I'll give it a try. So I gave it a try and it was just so slow moving for me. I had the audio version. I had the physical copy that I was kind of annotating. You can see some tabs. I also had an ebook version. So I truly like set myself up for success with this book and I just could not get through it. And I put a kind of poll out kind of feelers out on my Instagram, which is at Rosie Rose Reads, and asked my followers over there if it was worth sticking with it. And so many people responded and said that the end was not satisfying, that the kind of like all the different threads that were being wove so far, woven, wove, weaved, bleh, I think wove. Anyway, she didn't tie up the loose threads and so it kind of left the ending left you wanting and so for struggling through what's like arguably a pretty big book like almost 500 pages um wasn't satisfying so I decided to call it quits that being said there were some quotes that like I really loved in here so maybe a different version of me will pick this book up again. I am going to hold on to it even though I DNF'd it. I'm not going to unhaul it in case a future version of me decides to pick it up and stick with it. We will see. Um, I have heard from other people that they really enjoyed The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern even if they weren't a fan of A Starless Sea and that one is on my TBR so I might give that one a try and see. Okay, next up, I listened to the audio version of Delilah Green Doesn't Care by Ashley Herring Blake, which is a sapphic romance, and this has been on my shelf for quite a while. I also have book two, and I believe that book three in this universe either just came out or is about to come out, um, but Ashley Herring Blake writes wonderful sapphic romances, adult, steamy, and I've heard great things. So I listened to the audio version of this and I have to be real, 
I have to be honest, I didn't listen as closely as I listened to some books. So I wasn't as invested in the characters. Like I think I was multitasking and it just kind of got away from me in a couple places and then I didn't go back. So I missed some of the connection and that's totally on me. It's not on the book at all. Um, but I will say that what I really enjoyed about this book is it is still fun and light but it feels really real like sometimes in romance books you're like that meet cute or that relationship or like these circumstances are so fictional like there's no way that that happens in real life there's no way that people behave in real life and this situation this setup this relationship definitely like felt fictional, it felt fun, it felt light for contemporary romance, but it felt real. It felt like, oh, that could actually happen. People actually behave in those ways. And like, that's a situation that might happen. So I enjoyed it for that aspect. I gave it four stars. I would recommend it. I unfortunately don't remember a lot of the like nitty gritty details, but it is a kind of like um, estranged sister's best friend book that uh, Delilah goes, back to this kind of small town where she was raised for her estranged sister's estranged stepsister's wedding and meets her stepsister Astrid's best friend Claire and they hit it off. So yeah, I would recommend it. Um, I think if you're looking for a sapphic romance, definitely check it out. Um, okay, I'm making this face because Next up, I had what I was really hoping would be a book that I enjoyed that I just did not. Oh, the dog has entered the chat. Okay, we're back after my dog just decided to bust in the door when she was done with dinner. Um, where was I? I was making a face because I really wanted this book to be a hit and it just wasn't. It was like, a two and a half star for me which is a low ranking for me and that is The Cloisters by Katie Hayes. I wanted to really be in a kind of like dark academia mood if you go back and watch my September TBR all of my Libby holds are coming video. I really was going for like dark academia type feel and I thought this book would be great. It's about a girl who is a like in museum, in the museum world and goes to the Cloisters, which is a part of like subsidiary of the Met in New York City. And she starts researching tarot cards and kind of finds herself in this like cult-like kind of group within the Cloisters researchers who believe in these tarot cards and are kind of hanging out with the tarot cards after hours outside of their work, should we say. So I like, I love museums. I work in museums. Um, so I was really into that. And unfortunately it just felt totally flat for me. The pacing was so off. There was a mystery element, but like the setup for the mystery didn't happen until like 60% of the book. And by that time it was very clear who had committed what was supposed to be a mystery. So it just wasn't for me. Um, I have been looking on Instagram and seen a couple of my mutuals who read this in September also and it didn't hit for them either. So uh, I would I would like to say I'd recommend it. I just don't and that's a bummer but not every book is a hit. So that happens. But the next book was a hit and that is an arc. I was so lucky <laughs> with arcs, with this arc. I literally like kind of screamed when it came in. Um, and that is Two Twisted Crowns, which is the follow-up book to One Dark Window by Rachel Gillig. And One Dark Window kind of took the fantasy romance world in its grasp and had everybody there with it and Two Twisted Crowns was great. This is a duology, it's now completed. Um, 
yeah I really don't want to say too much because it comes out later this month and I was a big proponent of going into One Dark Window pretty blind and um, I think you should do the same for Two Twisted Crowns. I will say my one complaint with One Dark Window was I knew this was supposed to be a duology and I wasn't sure if it was supposed to be a duology what the timing and pacing was like for the um, main romance in One Dark Window. I was kind of like this seems a little rushed for what's supposed to be a duology. Reading this book I understand why Rachel Gillig did it that way so I apologize to Rachel Gillig for not trusting that she knew what she was doing because she did know what she was doing and I take back that that was my complaint about One Dark Window. One Dark Window now has no complaints and Two Twisted Crowns is easily also a like four and a half five star book. Um, Ugh, five star I say five star but like there was maybe a little teeny tiny bit more that I wanted out of it but maybe I just shouldn't be so critical because I really enjoyed it I dropped everything else I was doing so that I could read it and like if that's not a five star experience then what is so um yeah I'm super excited for everybody else to read it and for everybody to be chatting about it and I am very thankful that I got an arc of it because I was excited to read it. Okay, and next up I read Graceling by Kristen Cashore. This book was published in 2008, so it has been on the scene for quite a while, but I did hear it was pretty like a good early example of YA fantasy romance, so I picked it up. I did enjoy reading it. I got a little annoyed sometimes with our main character Katza who is really good at killing people. Basically she's like gifted with being good at killing people so she's used by a weapon. She's used as a weapon by her uncle who is the king um, and then when she meets Poe she kind of starts to examine that's what she wants to do. She kind of starts to examine it before she meets Poe but nonetheless um Katza kind of has this like I'm not like other girls. I don't like girly things. I don't want to get married type of attitude and like listen I love that. I'm all for that. Like you do you but uh, sometimes when it it like keeps coming up I start to get annoyed because I'm like I'm get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. And like you can totally be a badass who doesn't want to get married, doesn't want to have kids, doesn't like girly things, wants to cut your hair short. You can absolutely be a, be a badass and do all those things, but you can also be a badass who likes girly things and like does want to get married and do things. And like both sets, both sides of the spectrums can be a badass anywhere in the middle. Like I'm all for it, but like you don't have to constantly hate on these girls for this person to be a badass and that kind of got just the tiniest bit annoying to me at certain times. So I did give this one like three and a half. It was good. I am I gonna reread it? No. Was it monumental for me? No. But it was good and I enjoyed it while I was reading it. I did try to pick up book two only to find that book two follows a different set of characters and I was disappointed by that. So I put book two down and yeah, I was bummed that we weren't getting more Katza and Poe. And I think we were going to get more Katza and Poe, but just like tiny bits of them. I was just bummed it wasn't like mainly about them because I thought this was a trilogy mainly about them and I was wrong. So dun dun na na. Why did I do that? Last but not least. <laughs> I finished Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Maas. This was book eight. My husband and I were doing a full SJM listen through of all of her books over like probably the past year. I want to say about the past year. I think we got through them all. Um, and obviously Kingdom of Ash was last before Crescent City 3 comes out in January and we finished it up on our trip to Maine. We took a little bit of a like road trip part so we were in the car and we finished it up. Um, yeah I love Throne of Glass. I love Aelin. I love Manon. I actually like 
really enjoy Kale's character growth. Um, did I say Dorian? Because I love Dorian more than I love any other SJM man. Um, maybe Rune. We'll see. But right now it's still Dorian. I just love him. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I really like Throne of Glass. This book uh, is huge. It's good. It sometimes draws out and like the stakes could be higher um you know like I think that's a criticism a lot of people have is that you kind of feel like characters are gonna be okay and then they are okay for the most part um so it, it comes in at about like a four four and a half for me but overall I really enjoy Throne of Glass and I would really recommend it um <laughs> I am partial to Crescent City as my favorite of her series so far, but Bryce is definitely my favorite female main character that Sarah J Mass has written. So anyway, that is where we are at. We finished that up and then we were kind of at a loss because we were like, oh, we just read, how many books are there? Eight, five. Two. Okay, we just read 15 books by the same author and now we don't have any more of her books to read. So what are we going to listen to? Um, but maybe I will chat about that in my October TBR video or my October wrap up video. I'm not going to chat about it today. Somehow I feel like I talked for so long. My throat is like genuinely sore. I feel like I've been chatting forever and I only had eight books to talk about. Nine if I talked about the DNF book. Um, so maybe I was just a little chatterbox and was rambling and I'm sorry if that was the case. If you made it this far, I hope you found it interesting. As always, please drop your comments down below. Let me know if you've read these books, what you thought of these books. If you're taking any recommendations, let me know if you have any books that you recommend based off of what I have read. Just chat. I love to chat with people and talk about books. I love reading. I love books. That's why I do this. And yeah, this is fun. You guys, this isn't supposed to be anything that's like super serious, but I really enjoy like making these little videos and talking about books and sharing this with the few people who do watch these. So thank you again if you are one of those people. And hopefully I will have enough time to film an October TBR and chat with you all again soon. But until that time, I hope you have a five-star read. Thanks. Bye.